worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me hallelujah oh hallelujah jesus the name above Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one life. None beside you open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
Jesus, you are my firm foundation. Yes, you are, Lord. In you, I will stand <coughs> secure. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. We have a good God. We have a mighty God. Yes, Lord. We have a faithful God. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. He's our provider. Yes, Lord. Protector. Our everything. He's our <coughs> guardian. He is that high tower that we run into in times of trouble. Amen. Amen. He's our way maker. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen.
see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you and are. And I will declare it. You're the waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That is who you are. times yes, Lord. he has made a way for me yes. amen. amen when there seemed to be no way and you know I'm glad I can't figure God out because <coughs> the moment I can figure him out oh that he's not God anymore <laughs> if I can figure him out oh, he's not big enough to be God <laughs> He is God. Amen. Every bit God. <coughs> the only true God. Jesus. True God. <coughs> and not just that. He's my daddy. Amen. He's a good, good He's father. Good. <coughs>
you lord god we give you glory in this place oh, hallelujah hallelujah you are a good good father hallelujah lord. hallelujah lord we just praise your name in this moment with all that may be going on in life we stop to give praise to the king of kings and lord of lords hallelujah he is worthy 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 praise your name jesus hallelujah amen Good to see everybody this week, and I thank you for your prayers. A few announcements. We are, are going to uh, cancel Bible study for this coming Tuesday night. One more week. Um, I am feeling better. Back is getting there. I still have my, my moments, but God is good. Amen. We praise God for that. But Wednesday, we will be here in the sanctuary for prayer. I appreciate you praying for me this past Wednesday night. I really do appreciate that. We have much to pray for. Many in our congregation have needs, and we just want to lift them up. Many of you may have heard uh, this past week, I believe it was Thursday, that, Cinder, uh, that, that Sister Linda Gleason's dad did pass away. Um, there is a wake for her father. At Mangano's Funeral Home in Deer Park on Tuesday night from 5 to 8. And there'll be a, a service at the funeral home on Wednesday morning at 10. And then they'll proceed to the cemetery. I'm sure she would appreciate a call or a text. Um, but let's keep the family in prayer at this time. If you have your Bibles, turn to one of the most familiar passages in all of the Word of God. Psalm 23. I really want to emphasize for all of us today that the Lord really is my shepherd. Amen. He really, really is my shepherd. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The words of the 23rd Psalm are perhaps the most well-known verses in all the Bible. These words have provided comfort to people throughout history in times of struggle, in times of uncertainty, in times of heightened anxiety. 
we're living in a day when that seems to be so true, when there is so much struggle, there is so much sorrow, and overall there just seems to be so much stress. People are facing things more than they could have ever imagined. So it would seem fitting at this time to turn to a portion of scripture or to a psalm that would bring comfort where there seems to be none in the world around us. And yet, one of the things I find so striking about the 23rd Psalm is that not only does it bring comfort, it reminds me of what I have to be thankful for. And we as Christians need to see that more than any because so many believers are more than capable and they are truly able to trust God for their eternal needs, for their salvation, but trusting him for the day to day for the here and now seems to present a bit of a challenge. Not only was the Lord able to save me, but Jesus was able to keep me as well, Amen. day to day. Again, this psalm gives us hope in days that are filled with challenge, but it also gives us a reason to be thankful. He opens it with, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't know, in this day and age of tremendous discontent, when anybody says, I shall not want, that catches my attention. <laughs> we live in a time of universal discontent. There is dissatisfaction everywhere. Oh, yeah. Feelings of hopelessness and depression are felt by everyone. Now, this might be dating some of us, but you remember an advice columnist going back who went by the famous title of Dear Abby, mm -hmm. Abigail Van Buren, on February 14th, 1989, in the Chicago Tribune, this appeared. Dear Abby, you frequently print poems and you think are worth sharing with your readers. So I'm sending you one written by my grandson, Jason Lehman, who is 14 years old and lives in Connecticut. I hope you think it's worth printing. Well, she did. And here's the poem. It was spring, but it was summer I wanted. The warm days and the great outdoors. It was summer, but it was fall I wanted. The colorful leaves and the cool dry air. It was fall, but it was winter I wanted. The beautiful snow and the joy of the holiday season. It was winter, but it was spring that I wanted. The warmth and the blossoming of nature. I was a child, but it was adulthood I wanted, the freedom and the respect. I was 20, but it was 30 that I wanted, to be mature and sophisticated. I was middle-aged, but it was 20 that I wanted, the youth and the free spirit. I was retired, but it was middle age I wanted, the presence of mind without limitations. My life was over, and I never got what I wanted. That is some 14-year-old. To realize that so many people live their entire lives always pursuing something that leaves them short of what they need. And yet we serve a God that gives us the comfort that we can stand boldly and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. A little child may want more time with their toys or in front of the TV. A teenager may want more freedom or popularity. Adults may want this thing or that thing or more leisure time. As we get older, we want more health or financial security. But we have a God who we can say boldly, I shall not want. I lack for nothing. Amen. Familiar verses from Philippians chapter 4, where Paul is teaching the church at Philippi, not that I, not that I speak with regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state that I am in to be content. Amen. I know how to be abased. I know how to, be, how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now, I've read many of the verses before, and many of us have read the verses that follow, 
where Paul says after this, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And many believers, and I'll say rightly so, will say that verse, I can do all things, as a way of demonstrating their faith and confidence that they will overcome, that they will triumph, that they will be victorious in a situation. But the context of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is that I can not only do all things, I can put up with all things. That's exactly the context. He's not saying that he won't overcome, but I'll also endure. I know what it is to be hungry, he says. I know what it is to suffer need. I know what it is to be bound. Yet I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Because life with Jesus is satisfying. Life with Jesus is fulfilling. The 23rd Psalm gives us so many reasons to be thankful. And I'm going to point out three. Because any good sermon has to have three points. I was told that once. For this Psalm reminds us that God, the God that we serve, meets our needs. And the first one, our good shepherd gives us all We need. You've probably noticed over the course of your Christian life that the Bible often refers to the people of God as sheep. They are nice. They are cute. They are cuddly. And most animal lovers will explain to you they're the dumbest creatures on the face of the earth. So much for the nice, warm, cuddly feeling we have when we're referred to as sheep. So when Isaiah says, we all like sheep have gone astray, in Isaiah 53, he's not saying anything nice. And when Jesus looked out over the people with compassion, the gospel writers say that he saw them like sheep without a shepherd in Matthew 9. It's not a compliment either. Sheep require more attention than any livestock on a farm. They are completely incapable of taking care of themselves. Unless the shepherd tells them to move, they will stay in one location, essentially ruining the pasture that they're in. Sheep are nearsighted. They only see right in front of them. They cannot see long term. This next one is fitting for all the sheep. Sheep are stubborn. And they're easily frightened. An entire flock of sheep could be stampeded by a single little bunny rabbit. They are easily frightened. Yeah, I said too, brother. Yep. They have no homing instinct. Meaning basically that if they get lost, they're done. They have little means of defense and they are basically timid and feeble. They have only one recourse in life to have a life that's worth living, and that's to remain in the shepherd's care. And that's the same thing for you and me. We have only one recourse, only one hope of having a life that's worth living, and that's when we remain day by day, moment by moment, in the shepherd's care. So it should be abundantly clear that sheep cannot make it without the shepherd. And the only reason Daniel says, I shall not want, is because his days are filled with, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, what does the shepherd do for us? He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. Are there any troubled waters around us in life today? And yet our shepherd brings us beside still waters. And in the process of bringing us to green pastures and leading us beside still waters, he restores our soul. And to me, that's key. He doesn't just soothe our soul or comfort our soul. He restores it. He brings it back to a place where it is vibrant, where it is filled with life. The Lord that we serve restores the soul of his people. He leads us in paths that lead to good places. All we need to do is is follow. You know, often when I perform a wedding ceremony, the message I'll give at the ceremony is I'll liken marriage to GPS gadgets. 
they really are amazing gadgets, aren't they? They can, they're the only thing we allow in life to tell you where to go. Most people don't like being told where to go or like being directed. But we allow the GPS devices on our phones or in our cars to tell us where to go. And the premise behind that is that it can tell you where to go because it can see where you are. Always know that God knows where you are. And if you are following the directions and all of a sudden you take a turn on your own, which means it's a turn that's wrong, God can recalculate and put you back on the right path because he knows not only where you are, but where you need to be. He leads us in paths of righteousness, good places. He leads us to places of provision and fulfillment. And he said he makes me lie down. Now, I've had to personally experience this lately because the best position for me with my back lately is to lie down. But how long can you lie down before you want to get up and just do something? No, Hiram, lie down. But I'm done lying down. Apparently not. Hiram, lie down. He makes us lie down. Now, for a sheep, and I would encourage anyone to study sheep. It's a fascinating study. They really are clueless creatures. For a sheep to lie down, certain conditions must be true. First, they must be full. Hungry sheep will keep searching for food. Next, they must be unafraid. If they sense any danger around them, they will not lie down. Even if it's a slight fear or suspicion, they must be content. Any little thing bothering the sheep, and they won't be able to lie down. Anyone ever been there before? Any little thing bothering them. And oddly enough, and they've measured this, in order for the sheep to lie down, they need to be in harmony with the other sheep. If there's any issues going on, any territorial spats going on between sheep, they'll all stay standing until they're resolved. That's fascinating. It seems to me that sheep are really, really touchy. Mm, and God's people keep being called sheep. He makes us lie down. But the place where we do is a green pasture beside still waters. And the Lord does all this to restore us so that we can go on these paths of righteousness. So not only can Jesus present, uh, be present and fill our lives with peace, but he can also fill your future with promise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Following his paths. You follow your own path, you're done. You follow your own path, we will be lost. But he leads us in paths that lead to good things. So the first reason to be thankful is that God provides all that we need. The second is that our good shepherd protects us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear really can destroy a life, can't it? The enemy's most powerful weapon I have seen over the course of my ministry is fear. If he can fill a Christian with fear, if he can fill anybody with fear, his work is done. Because fear will cause us to do all the other things that get us in trouble. Now, fear is a reaction. It's a reaction to a situation. And the majority of the times, it's an honest reaction. The problem is, is that fear is just that, a reaction. It should never become the decision we make. David declared, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the shepherd was with him. A first grader stood in front of his classroom to make a speech about what I want to be when I grow up. He said, I'm going to be a lion tamer and have lots of fierce lions. I'll walk into the cage and they will roar. I will crack my whip and they will bow down before me. He paused for a moment thinking about what he had just said then added, but of course my mommy will be with me at that time too. <laughs> Fear may be a natural reaction and I want that understood. 
but it doesn't have to be the final resolution. It may be the first word, but fear never has to have the last word in your life or in mine. Our Savior is with us, and with our Savior, fear becomes the first word, but never the last word. And that's his promise. So when we walk through life's valleys, we can do so without that gripping fear that so many experience. And it says, his rod and his staff comfort me. For a shepherd, they would have basically two pieces of equipment, two big sticks. One called a rod and the other a staff. The rod was essentially just a big straight stick that had a lot of tension to it. It was a powerful stick. The staff would be a similar stick, but would have a hook on the end of it. The rod was simply there to keep anything away from the sheep that might attack them. It was for the shepherd's ability to beat off all the sheep's attackers. The staff was a long stick with the hook on the end of it, and it was to guide the sheep back to the fold. You and I need to realize in our dealing with one another that our Lord is going to use his staff to bring us back. In any situation of life we face, our Lord has the power to defeat every enemy that walks into your life. Everything that comes against you, our Jesus has the ability to defeat it and at the same time guide you back to a place of safety and comfort. David goes on to say, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That last phrase is key for me, in the presence of mine enemies. Because most people believe or feel that they'll be able to relax, they'll be able to enjoy, they'll be able to experience happiness or contentment when whatever situation they're in that's causing these issues or that's providing challenge is gone. But we're able to have this meal, we're able to have this feast in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of what's causing me trouble, in the presence of what's creating this deep hurt. I don't have to wait until the difficulty passes. I can experience Jesus and all his fullness in the presence of my enemies. God wants to show you and me how to flourish, not just when we've been delivered, but in the presence of the need to be delivered. In the presence of hard times. Not just waiting until they're over. I don't need for them to find a vaccine for COVID. I mean, I, I'd like them to. But before I can experience joy again or comfort. In the center of your struggle, he prepares a feast. In the presence of your enemy. Too many have the idea that I'll be able to enjoy life again when life is enjoyable again. I'll be able to sing again when the problem has passed. Be able to feast after things get better. But your enemies aren't the issue. Now, Pastor, what are we talking about with enemies? They could be the people around you. They could be. They could be voices from your past telling you things that are contrary to what God says about you telling you that you're a failure, or that you won't make it to the next step, or that you're not good enough. Your enemies could be influences that are close and that pull you down. Your God can deliver you from all of them, every single one of them, in the presence of your enemies. But the day of rejoicing, the day of gladness, the day of feasting doesn't have to wait until I experience deliverance. The three Hebrew boys were walking around free just having a grand old time because in the midst of the fire this fourth person showed up who looked like the son of God to the king Nebuchadnezzar. You can feast. You can enjoy. You can relax in the presence of my enemies. One thing I've experienced with the recent back troubles I've had in the last couple of weeks is that it's difficult to relax. My, my back will tense up and, and then even when it begins to subside, I'm 
anxious about every next step because it might create the same issue. So when I was at the doctor's this past Friday, he wrote me a prescription for a muscle relaxer. I had never taken those before. I've experienced something quite new. When my muscles relax, I pass out. And he wants me to take these things three times a day, which means I'm going to be passing out all day long. <laughs> Make me lie down. But beyond just our muscles needing to relax, so many of us need our minds to relax, our thoughts to relax. But pastor, we see this coming and that coming. But you have a good shepherd. And he has a, a rod to beat off your enemies and a staff to keep you close. So in the midst of your pressure-filled situations, your most daunting problems, you and I can truly walk and live in a fear-no-evil mindset. Because he is with us. My third point. Not only is the good shepherd taking care of our needs and is the good shepherd protecting us but our good shepherd has awesome days ahead for you I know there are problems in the church today and the truth is there have been problems in the church for a long time but there's also been great days for the church in the past but I'm never going to ever be one to look at the good old days it's just not who I am I believe the best days of the church are ahead of her, not behind her. Because I have a shepherd who can cause goodness and mercy to follow me. And in the Hebrew, that follow literally means chase after me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very easily, God could choose to shower your life and my life with justice. Thankfully, he chooses to shower it with goodness and mercy. Aren't you glad about that? So many people crying out, I want my fair shake. I want what's fair. And yet our lives are filled so littered with disobedience. And we fall short every day. I'm thankful that my Jesus is not fair with me. My Jesus is gracious with me. My Jesus is merciful with me. He is loving when I don't deserve it. He is caring when we turn our backs on him. He is good to me even when I'm not good to him. And he is merciful, which means he gives me good things when I don't deserve them. Thank you, Lord, for not being fair with me. I found this story and it just, it made me laugh, but then it also seemed to fit. Imagine, husbands, that you're at a mall with a friend and become so engrossed in looking at sporting goods or whatever interests you and you forget all about the time. Suddenly, you remember that you were supposed to pick up your wife at 2.30 from the beauty salon, and it's already 4 o'clock. With a cry of, oh no, you rush to the phone to call the beauty parlor and ask if she's still there. They say no, she left some time ago. You think, I'm dead. Your friend asks, is something wrong? Your answer, I was supposed to pick up my wife an hour and a half ago. My in-laws are coming over tonight, and this was going to be a special evening, but I forgot to pick her up. Then you get back on the phone and call home, and your son answers. You ask, son, is your mom home? Your son answers, dad, whatever you do, don't come home. Oh <laughs> yeah, she's here, but she had to walk home. Have you looked outside, dad? It's pouring outside. It started raining about five minutes after she started walking. What does she look like? Well, Dad, you know how the dog looks when the rain is on the dog? Something like that. 
Then the final words from the son were, Goodbye, Dad. I love you. <laughs> well, you know you're in a world of trouble. But you head home anyway. And as you pull into the drive of your street, you see your in-laws coming down the street. And you think, I've got to beat them inside and make things right. You open the door and try to assume your most humble expression and posture. You droop your shoulders, you, but your wife stands there with a soup spoon in one hand and a knife in the other and has that look in her eyes. You promised 2.30. I walked over a mile in these high heels to get home. And it rained the whole way. Where have you been? You think, well, what can I say? I hit my head in the mall and got amnesia. A terrorist grabbed me and I was held hostage for a few hours. No, that won't do. A terrorist. <laughs> You're better off with the amnesia story. I've got to tell her the truth. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot and I just forgot. I have no excuse. I just forgot. Finally, she responds, I know you forgot. It's okay. Give me a kiss and let's forget it. Gentlemen, what kind of kiss do you think you would give your wife at that moment? It would not just be some peck on the cheek. Even if your in-laws are coming through the door, I'm sure you would grab her and kiss her like you've never kissed her before. And you would say, honey, you're the greatest wife in the world. Thank you for being so forgiving and so understanding. When we come before God, when we come to his house and truly realize what he's done for us, what he saved us from, what he's protected us from, we're not going to give him just a little lip service. We're going to embrace him and love him the way he deserves because he has done so much for us. He has saved us from so much. He has protected us from so much. A terrorist held me hostage. That doesn't, that doesn't work, pal. So when we come to church each Sunday morning and we hear about the goodness of God and the mercy of God, are we just going to give him a little peck on the cheek or are we going to love him and embrace him with all that we are? And if you can't find your way home, your good shepherd can find you. You see, the 23rd Psalm for me gives so much context and meaning to the parable where Jesus left 99 sheep to find one. In so many of the thinking of this world, that seems, one, unfair, and to the 99 sheep to be without their shepherd, and two, unproductive. It's only one sheep. But that's how much you mean to Jesus. That he would leave the 99 to find you and bring you home. He'll lead you back, and he'll redeem you from all your sins. He'll put you on a path of righteousness. And he'll cause your cup not just to be filled, but to overflow. Well, I don't have anything to give to God or to other people. Yeah, you do. Because you have a good shepherd. And he's causing your cup to overflow. And he'll have two of his buddies chasing after you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy. And one day, and what might seem, given what's going on, a day not too far away, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, if you're not ready for that, I invite you to accept him today as Lord and Savior. But as I know most of you that are here, our concern isn't meeting the Savior. It's staying in his care. Not letting other people get in the way of following him the way we need to.
Not letting other people get in the way of loving him the way he ought to be loved. Not letting other people get in the way, and that by other people, I mean that it could be yourself as well. Not letting you get in your way with our own attitudes. Well, this is how God should be worshipped. This is why I've always, throughout my entire adult life, let alone my ministry, I've had really no problem worshipping in all kinds of settings. Now, I'm committed fully to being part of a Pentecostal church. But when it's truly worship, it doesn't require a lot of sound. I remember being in Indonesia with an underground church, and it wasn't loud. Because if it had been loud, they would have all been arrested. But it was worship that was deep, and it was felt, and the spirit moved. So where are you today in this end of August? We're getting close to the fall, and it would seem by most accounts it's going to be one of the most interesting fall seasons we've ever lived through, whether that be medically or with all the things with school or politically. But the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy will follow me will follow you will follow his people all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever hallelujah God is good he is a good good father it's who he is and we are loved by him it's who we are so wherever you are today whatever you're going through today Whatever you're feeling today, whatever things have happened that are rightly causing reactions, whether they be fear, whether they be grief, those are natural reactions. But we are still safe in the shepherd's care. Stand with me, please. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today in my home. In my home, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my home, Lord, be glorified. In your church. Yeah. Lord, be glorified. Lord, be glorified in my life. That's our desire, Jesus, that you would be glorified, that we would remain always in the shepherd's care. Thank you for taking such good 
care of your sheep. Thank you for watching over the flock. Thank you for taking care of your people. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Sing that one more time. I love you, Lord. To worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear father we praise you in this place we glorify your name you really are a good good father the good shepherd you give us all that we need you protect us so well and you have prepared a future for us where our cup will continually overflow. Lord, help us to be a blessing to other people. Lord, we pray for Sister Linda and her family right now that you would just be a blessing at this time of loss of her dad. Lord, that you would just minister to her life. Lord, be a blessing to them. Guide them to your side at this time. Lord, for those of us in this church that are dealing with medical issues we know you are still the great physician that your word is the final word and we trust in you and you alone guide your people for we want to proclaim and be have you glorified in all that we do and say we ask all these things in jesus name and all god's people said Amen. god bless you <laughs>